don't think it's possible to talk about <clears throat> the true human nature or how we're meant to act or function as a species, as it is with anything, without knowing what our objective is. Um, any, any problem you're trying to solve, any belief you're trying to evaluate or whatever it is, you need to know like what, the way you measure it, the way you assess it, is based on what it's meant to achieve. So as I've been spending time over the last week or so trying to think about what's the right way for us to function as, as a people, as a society, you, you need to address that first. And I, and I don't think I have. And perhaps I haven't because in many ways what, what you're getting at there is like, what's the meaning of life? What's the purpose for us being on this planet? Once you know that, then you can start to assess what's the right way for us to act. And obviously that's a deeply, deeply complex, philosophical, difficult, if not impossible question to answer. And there's lots of routes you can go, right? Some, some people go the religious route and say the meaning, the purpose, the objective is based on uh, some direction that's given to us from God or, or a God or many gods. Some people go a very scientific route and say from like an evolutionary biological perspective we're on this planet to procreate and to grow our species and to survive and thrive in that way um and that's that's how you look at it and there's there's various ways in which you can go um but again i, I come back to the point that it's very difficult to start to talk about the right ways for us to act in lieu of that right there, there's, there's ways that feel right to us right there's there's morals there's values, there's things that are ingrained in us in terms of how we should treat other people and the right way to act um, <clears throat> from different sources, you know, given the culture you grew up in and the time period you grew up in. But I guess, you know, to, to, a, to a broader point that I always talk about, it's very difficult to develop certainty on that topic because it's hard to gauge, it's hard to know which one is, is in effect right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to say, well, you, you just, you should treat people well, you shouldn't hurt people, right? That's, that's a basic kind of moral value that you should hold. Seems simple, seems easy, but is that even true, right? Like, what, what's a medical trial, for example, if not, you know, us potentially hurting people, putting people at risk, albeit voluntarily to some extent, you know, more recently, maybe historically not so much, but there's, there's a concept that we, that's not foreign to us that we accept, that there is, there's, there is this idea of sacrifice, right? We have an army, we have a military that, that, that risk their lives to save others. Um, so the idea of, you know, in the cliche phrase, you know, you crack a few eggs to make an omelet, that's something we buy into. So even that becomes complex, right? And, it, and on, on a long enough time horizon, depending on the perspective you sit on, how you crack those eggs, how many eggs you crack, what type of omelet it's meant to make, you know, to beat that metaphor to death, <clears throat> it becomes very subjective. So even that, you know, simple concept isn't simple and isn't easy. And, and that's why you have all these different views on the meaning of life. And perhaps, you know, some might say the true meaning is there is no meaning. There is no purpose. This is all random and chaotic. We're just trying to put meaning on it because for whatever reason, our minds have evolved to a way, unlike, you know, an, an animal that lives in the, in the desert or the jungle or wherever, um, to, to, to have perspective and awareness of it. And because of that, we're trying to place a purpose on it. We're trying to place something that says, this is why we're on this earth, or this is how you should act. We put morals on it or, or whatever it is, even if it's not morals, you can even take like a Nietzsche view where it's, um, you know, there's just a, a natural order to how we function. Um, but some might say, no, there's not. This is all just chaos and randomness. And you know, there's no, there's no purpose beyond that, which I, I, I could understand, right? It, it's almost, there's so much uncertainty that it feels random and chaotic and it, and it may very well be. But I do think if you take like a first principles approach to it, there are certain drivers in us that seem to be inherent. There are certain things that we seek that um, would give us <clears throat> some indication as to the meaning of life or how we're meant to function, right? Procreation appears to be one of them. That seems ingrained in our DNA and how we function that um, 
we are designed to procreate in some ways. And you could think of that in a very simple term of, you know, the way our bodies and, and, and the biology of us and how we're designed to do that. Um, and that you see it in all other animals and even plants, right? That they, they're trying to spread and grow. That's that, that growth seems to be a constant theme in nature. Um, you can even look at it from a more, you know, personalized, individualized level for, for most people. Um, there's a pleasure in it. There's an enjoyable aspect to it. And, and you can almost see that as also a driver in life. You know, you can see it in terms of procreating, but also just in general, we seek out things that are pleasurable to us or perhaps the inverse, right? We, or the, the flip of that saying, we try and avoid things that are detrimental or hurtful to us. There seems to be a natural drive to that, right? We don't stick our hand in the fire instinctively. We pull it back from the fire because that hurts us and we don't, we don't want that. So that seems instinctual. So the idea that there is some pure drive in us seems to be true. So I think what you try and do is you try and take that and say, okay, let's, let's build off of that and let's see if that leads us down a path to our purpose and what we're meant to do in life. And where it takes me, and, and I'll, I'll end on this and, and more to come on it, but is that perhaps the purpose of it all or what we're trying to do or the way where we should function is to strive for efficiency or said another way, minimize friction. Right? We're all here on this earth. Why we're on this earth, who knows? Um, we seem to have some natural drivers, which are to procreate and, and grow um, and seek pleasure. Right? Those, those appear to be kind of base functions or drives that we have. So as we almost, without any control, push forward towards those things, what we should strive for, the way we should try and function, is to minimize friction or, or drive efficiency in how we go after those things. And again, in simple terms right now, what does that mean for us practically? What does that mean on a day-to-day -day basis? Right? What does that mean for how we should treat each other? Well, it means that if you treat people really poorly, it's not necessarily that it's a morally wrong thing to do. It's that it's going to increase friction. Now, we'd like to think it's morally wrong, and maybe it is, and you know, maybe there is a God in the sky, or maybe there is just some inherent moral values that say, hey, that's bad. You're a bad person for doing that. But even if you remove that and take this kind of hypothesis, it's just, it's just ineffective. It's inefficient. It's going to cause friction. And if your goal is to procreate and grow the species and just seek pleasure as you do that and minimize pain, that, that friction is going to go against that, and that's what you want to avoid. So all the things that we try and abide by and act as in a culture, that should be the goal, is to minimize that friction. And when something increases friction, when something becomes inefficient in allowing us to act towards that way, perhaps it's a single person or group that's acting very selfishly towards their own benefits and it's hurting lots of other people in some way. Again, it's not necessarily that that's a morally wrong thing and that's why we should stop it. It's, hey, that's going to cause friction. And that's going to cause problems and it's going to cause pain for lots of people. And that's going to cause them to react because that's not what they want. That's going against their drivers. So it's almost a very, I mean, obviously a logical first principles base view of it. It's not to say that it's right, but I'm trying to kind of build it from the bottom up, right? And, and there's so many unknowns in this, so you can't know for sure, but you have to start somewhere. And in effect, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm not trying to dismiss, you know, a biological view of it. I'm not trying to dismiss a religious view of it. I'm just trying to see where logic takes us. If you start very simple, where, where do you go? And I think you have to continue down that path and, and see and question and probe it from all angles.